We don't really usually anyway do Shark Week at the Young Turks and we're not gonna do it this time. We are gonna make our shark focus happen after everyone in the world has spent their week on sharks. We're gonna do it here a little bit differently. And for that reason, I have Stephanie Brendel on Reasonably Sure this week. Uh, thanks so much for being here, thanks. Stephanie. Stephanie, you are here, I mean, basically you wanna change the way sharks are looked at in mm -hmm. the world. You also wanna save them. Yeah. And you have made this a lifetime passion. I think mm -hmm. what I want our viewers to learn about is how to kind of take a passion and do something with it. And a lot mm -hmm. of our, almost all of our guests have done that. And it's mm -hmm. a scary thing to do. Uh, but some people think it's scary to swim with sharks and you've yeah. done that too. So, <laughs> cool. uh, so how, I mean, listen, you're from Germany, right? I mean, the shark's not an issue in Germany. No. Oh, not even not even the ocean ocean wasn't even in my life until mm -hmm. I was in my teenage years but once I started diving and I moved to the Pacific Islands basically my whole life changed right. and there's no going back after something like that and um, I always wanted to make a living in and around the ocean of course didn't start with with this sort of advocacy right. but uh, I started diving and taking photographs and doing a little bit of you know freelance work as, as a camera person and it just one thing led to another and you know, I just fell in love with the larger animals. I was drawn to whales and dolphins and sharks, and sharks are just uh, unique because they're predators and they're truly wild. You know, everybody's first experience with a shark, from what I, I've gone diving, but I mm. not not enough, but I know people who dive a lot mm. as a hobby. Everybody talks about seeing a shark, what it does to your adrenaline when you're right. diving. What, what, it, uh, what was your first shark encounter like? Do you remember it? It wasn't, it wasn't scary at all. I mean, I wanted to see sharks and I was lucky enough to start diving in a place where there were sharks on every dive. So it, it was a normal thing for me. I knew that they belonged there. I knew they would be around. And I was just really fascinated just to watch them and learn about them because I, was, I grew up with animals. I was really into horses as a kid. So I really love watching animal behavior. And when you first see sharks, we don't really understand them because they don't have your typical body language. They don't have facial expression. They have really very obvious body language once you know what you're looking for, but it's just very subtle. Right. So that's why people think that they just have this stare that has no emotion but it's really not like that. You know, they're very, to me, they're very obvious because I've watched them so much. Right, it's hard to be who I am and who most people are and think, oh, when I first saw a shark underwater, I mm. wanted to see them mm -hmm. and I wasn't scared at all. I think that popular culture has made us, and, and to a detriment, and I know this is a part of what you're, you're trying to mm -hmm. do with your organization, we're gonna talk about that, but to change our perception of sharks. But mm -hmm. for what it is now, it's jaws, it's don't be, you know, don't go yeah. in the water, that type of a thing. So what what do you think separates you and your preparation for it? Horses are not sharks. I mean, you're not supposed to walk behind a horse, right? But, but, but when you got in the water and, uh -huh. and it didn't happen to you, mm -hmm. you know, it didn't have, that adrenaline rush didn't happen in that way. Um, you know, I'm, I generally don't do things and tr I try not to get into the territory of an adrenaline rush no matter what I do. And I've done a lot of adventure sports, yeah. but I, I like to be educated about it. So as soon as I'm in an area, whether it's horses or sharks, it's really not that different. It's animal behavior, it's human behavior. You watch how they move, you watch how they approach you. So for me, if I can have time to make up my own mind about something and yeah. I feel educated, I don't feel really that scared of it. It's not understanding is what makes people scared. Yeah. And sharks in, are in an environment that we don't even understand. We're scared just going into the ocean. Then it's blue, it's steep, it's mysterious. So it's the worst setup for our primal fears. Right. You know, you're, you're already scared of the depth and that there's this thing that can move in any direction and we're really helpless in the water. So it's a real setup for tapping into real deep, seated fears that we have, yes, and, but it's getting better. I think the, there's a lot more people now that are understanding it, maybe not on an emotional level yet, but they intellectually right. they understand that it's not really an issue. You don't need to be scared. It doesn't change how you feel when you go in the water. Right. But I think that there have actually been a lot of good films, a lot of good education. I think people are starting to understand that movies like Jaws and, and The Deep Blue, it's fiction, it's a horror movie. You know, right. it's, it's, you know, you go and watch zombie movies, you're not gonna be afraid of that. They don't exist, you know, but what I'm saying is people are starting to understand 
go have fun, watch these monster movies, they're fun, right. but it's not reality. Right, and, and for such a long yeah. time, we, we assumed that it was. I mean, yeah. I, I'm of the Jaws generation, right. and there was a period of time where I couldn't get in, in the ocean because yeah. I thought, you know, what's, what's underneath me? Obviously, we know now how infrequent these incidents are. As, as a matter of fact, I cover politics a lot of the time, mm. and there's this whole thing about voter fraud, right? right? There were more instances of shark attacks, and there's so few shark attacks than there were voter fraud in one year. Oh, wow. And, and yeah, <laughs> I know, so that, that. yeah, so that's, and, and, and so I, we know intellectually, you talked about intellectual versus right. emotional. We are so tied into the emotional, right. but we sit down and look at the intellectual. I mean, yeah. it, it's the same thing with flying. There are half oh. a million people in the air all the time, right? We don't think about that, that there are 500,000 yeah. people in the sky right now. So the same thing with sharks. I, you know, you talk about the intellectual. One thing that we don't typically intellectualize and, and, and haven't, but I think what you're doing is starting to make that happen mm -hmm. and it has to be gratifying, is the notion that sharks are endangered, mm -hmm. right? That there is a problem with that. We know about save the whales, save the rhinos, right. save the elephants, but sharks, because they are so mean and fierce and they will eat us if they have us yeah. next to them, which I know is not true, they, they, it's hard to get that sympathy, isn't it? You know, I always thought that too, but what I have found is, is that when most people actually see the pictures and see, and they're horrible to look at, and I understand that, and we try not to overdo it, I have really not come across a lot of people that don't empathize. It's more that they don't know that it's going on, right. and in, at the numbers it's going on. And, you know, because it has to do with fishing, and sharks are fish, you know, some people believe that they don't feel pain or they don't have emotions, which... I don't think any species could survive if they didn't have emotions or pain. They would constantly hurt themselves. So uh, I have found even talking to politicians, it doesn't matter f of what persuasion, most people get it. You yeah. know, um, usually what stops any kind of progress is really a commercial interest. It's greed, it's money. Somebody makes a lot of money. Sometimes people play on that by saying, oh, it's jobs, you know, we have to, this is all I know how to right. do. We have to continue doing it. We make good money off of the fins, so let us keep doing it because we're taking the sharks legally. Um, it's really comparable to what happens with uh, with elephants and rhino horn. With the ivory trade. Yeah, with right. ivory. It's, it's a product that is driving the extinction even though you might have gotten that animal legally by you still selling that product, you are masking the illegal trade or just basically you're boosting the trade because you're making it okay for people to have it. So it's a circular argument like, you know, who's benefiting? Am I taking money away from you? Yes, but the problem is that you are providing a product that is destroying not just one species, many species. Right.